Robert Todd Lincoln, the son of President Abraham Lincoln, sitting. Crowd surged as the train was coming in and he got pushed off the platform. He's literally seconds away from getting smashed by this train. Out of the blue, right as he's about to get smacked and die from this train, this hand comes down, grabs him, and launches him up from the train platform and saves his life. He recognized who it was right away. He was one of the most famous actors from one of the most famous acting families in America. It was What do you think now, You, you, you'll lose me. There's a screen in the room. <laughs> like, wow. You know, I've never been to Peru. <laughs> Every time you shift, you like just look up. I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah? Fucking doing vape I'm plaza. <laughs> doing lung giggles, dude. <laughs> you got three of those? You got three of those? I know, wait. What are lung, lung giggles? Yeah. You know, I'm just, you know, just strengthening them up. Dude, I'm look, look. I just like Ugh, he sat lungs down. Are he so was, strong. He sat down. AJ sat down and looked into the camera. What did you say? I'm <laughs> doing lung kegels. No. Oh, oh, earlier with the hat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I said I look like Paddington Bear if he was from Panama Beach because <laughs> of the <laughs> bucket so hat, dude. Yeah. Hey. Great. I'm just thinking like lung say kegels, like to be hi the real straight goat. To <laughs> Eli. It's racially ambiguous and batty. It's fucking ridiculous and we don't know Best not to ask yourself why But my friend, you've arrived Welcome to unsubscribe Okay, there we go, finally I'm like, oh my god And then we got Mr. Jack up waking up, Glock ready? 3, Everyone, get your get your cans up We put it right here by the mic Everyone knows Three, this there Three, two, one Ooh. Wow, that was really synchronized I That think was that ever happened. <laughs> and then Jack <laughs> Jack, that's how he drinks. You'll get used to it. <laughs> that is the whole episode. <laughs> you think it's a bit. It's not. Welcome to the Unsubscribe Podcast. We are joined with the beautiful Brandon, the gorgeous Jack, and then our brand new friend, AJ Wilkerson. Oh, we get beautiful and gorgeous, and then. Okay. Well, you're, the, you're the gonna fucking go. new guy, so, you know, hey. True. Paddington Bear <laughs> has joined the fucking podcast. Our, our comedian hero slash veteran slash autistic autism. You've described like four people who've been on this podcast. It's everyone sitting at the table right now. We're, just, <laughs> we're yeah. so stuck on who I'm talking I'm about. Not a, I'm not a veteran. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Got a hero, a veteran, an autistic comedian, <laughs> yeah. and a veteran. Hey, the only the only spectrum I'm on is my cable plan, man. <laughs> God damn it! I hate spectrum so much. <laughs> uh, we'll just go on that rant right off the bat. I fucking I hate spectrum. Just, we just start oh, bitching same. about oh, that. Jesus Christ! Hi, beautiful guys. Thank you for all joining. This is like a random like fuck amalgamation of uh, people right now. This was the last minute we had to toss this together. So boo boo boo. But we've had AJ planned for how long? Uh, like a month, month, and month. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I, weirdly enough, I watched your content and I was like, oh, that guy's a veteran. I found that out like two days before when we were talking, you're like, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Military. I was like, you, yes. you're, I was in the kiss army. Never missed a show. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. I was, uh, I mean, I was kind of in the same thing. Fucking like, jack. I was National Guard, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> same, That's same. basically the KISS Army, dude. <laughs> because we were talking about, I want to know more on your experience. Also, leading up to one of my favorite stories last night was you trying to prove you weren't autistic, so you went and did a test to get it misdiagnosed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's a, yeah. So yeah. Uh, you joined what, 2006, six seven? Uh, yeah, joined 2006, seven, uh, basic training, Fort uh, Jackson, South Carolina, then AIT here uh, at Fort Sam Houston for six months, and then off to Fort Stewart to go work in like the actual hospital, do like the clinical side of x ray technician. Yeah, so you so are 16. A lot, bones, 68 papa. Yeah, 68. We have an actual person that scored high on a ASVAB test. Oh, us. I scored high as. Weird. Higher than you yeah. are right now. Uh, close, yeah. close. Yeah. That might be the tism. No, yeah, no. I uh, I scored a 97 on my ASVAB. No shit, yeah. What's the top, Jack, you know this. No, I didn't. You know how I passed the ASVAB? I actually did serve in the military as well. <laughs> and the KISS Army. I retreaded. Um, I... We had, I don't know, in the state I grew up in, we, they forced you to take the ASVAB. It wasn't, it was like a, they come to your high school and all the boys got to take the ASVAB. And I just wasn't thinking about the military at that time. So I was like, whatever. And I just checked C for every fucking box and I passed. 
Fucking seriously? Yeah. Oh, God. I didn't even, I just went, C, 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 C. I passed. Yep. Dude, they didn't even give him a test. They yeah. were just like, here's just a blank sheet <laughs> yeah. of paper. Just and I joined fun. the infantry. Yeah. And then <laughs> and now, now you're, you're within Marine. the lines. Yeah. Yeah. An yeah. ex-Marine. I'm an ex-Marine. Let's face it. I know people are offended by that statement, but I am an ex-Marine, okay? <laughs> 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 Jack never change. <laughs> no, and that's what's crazy. Wait, I'm still more amazed that you just did C's, but this was during B. This was pre 9 11 for you. Yeah, that, it was probably a year before 9 11. Yeah. yeah. It, if you want a good story, Jack got shot in basic training. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't think I ever heard that story. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll just put it this way like, by the end of my enlistment, the, dry, the parking lot of the barracks was filled with purple heart license plates. And I, didn't, and I went over there three times, not a scratch. I did get shot by another Marine at Camp Pendleton, though. Yeah. But you've never heard of this? No. Oh, my oh, God, Jack. No. This, is, <laughs> this is one of my favorite Jack stories. Has this, this is, ever been on the podcast? No, we did really? a drunken debrief for it. Yeah, oh, no, God. you you had me tell it last time. Go. Well, okay. Well, I, well, uh, Condense it. Condense yeah, it. We, uh, I got shot. There's 518 <laughs> to 20-year-olds learning the saw for the first time in rainy <laughs> weather. And uh, I always make it clear that this was before the these SOI, these infantry school instructors, it's before it became what's a, a B billet, where it's like good for career inv- uh, advancement. Back then, they're just like, "Oh, you got like six months left. Go, go babysit these hundreds of privates." And um, this is, <laughs> and for reference, this is the people that like. These are the dudes that did four years, and they fucking hate the military. Yeah. and those are the people yeah, that they're don't like, give "I'm it. just ready to fucking yeah. not be here." And they're like, yeah. "Go." Forge the minds of these children. Of the next generation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they're like that uh, like Nazi captain at the end of like fucking Jojo Rabbit. Like, dude, I don't fucking give a fuck. They're the high school but, chemistry but, teacher that retires but, at the go, end of the year. They're like, they're, just fucking watch but, the movie. I don't. Yes. Go too much to like. I don't be, fucking care. Yeah. They're 23-year-olds babysitting 18-year-olds. There's not, you know, being at the age I'm at now. That's still all pretty young. Um, but yeah, they, uh, we were doing squad rushes, shooting the guns, and uh, and uh, we marched back. It was a Friday. We marched, all of us marched back. It was going to be our first weekend out ever in Southern California. And uh, and we were just scrubbing those weapons as fast as we could to get them clean and in the armory so we could go out. And I'm on the barrel. I'm tag-teaming it like an Eiffel Tower with another guy. Well, you got to remember, so when they rod people off the range usually there's like a line and you yep. go through and, and it's very check. organized and everyone's yeah. like boom hey drill sergeant looks checks go next one and we did that they just weren't checking <laughs> and uh yeah he took the buttstock off of the saw and he set the weapon down and that sent the charging hand where were forward. you again i was standing at the end of the barrel and i had just dropped my uh my brush so i bent over my head right in front of the barrel and as i came <laughs> back up and started scrubbing again uh boom Thing went off and it uh, <laughs> tore through my arm, and uh, and I just stood there, and everyone's staring at me, and I see everyone staring at me. I'm processing what just happened, and I just start going, Sergeant, Sergeant, <laughs> <laughs> and then and they come grab me. There's two NCOs that show up, and they're just holding me, looking at each other, like, "What happened? I don't know, dude." Like the I know, oh, we fucked up had a conversation, and I'm just standing there, like, "I'm good. Don't worry about it." And um, and no, they tossed me in the the ambulance, and uh, they took me um, to the hospital, and got me all sutured up. But uh, didn't get done till like one in the morning, and I I assumed everybody would have been cut loose at that time. So they bring me back to the uh, squad bays at one in the morning, and everybody is sitting at the end on their little uh, what are those things called? Where you put all your stuff like in? The foot the, the, yeah, Foot Locker. Yeah, yeah, they're all sitting on their Foot Lockers, and. Uh, and uh, staring at me like it's my fucking fault uh, that that guy shot me. And um, this is like, as I'm, military as it gets. Yeah, I was on the receiving end of yeah. the barrel, if you don't recall. And then they they're reading off the list because if people fail written tests, uh, they have to redo it on a Saturday morning. Uh, they're reading off the list, and I failed offensive patrolling. I think it was, and they go Mandeville, and I'm still bleeding through the bandage, and I'm like, here for a sergeant. And he just looks at me and goes, you think you're getting out of the fucking test? And no, first sergeant. <laughs> so I had to go. The next day, I had to go in there still bleeding. And I'm just right. I can't even bend my <laughs> arm. I'm just putting in the bubbles. All C's. I passed, though. So. <laughs> like you still did the message. Yeah. C, but they C, pretty C, much C. they pretty much let me pass. I didn't have to do any uh, fitness tests after that or, or long hikes. They just they like knew they fucked up. And they knew I was just dumb and new enough not to like 
Ray's escalated to, to escalate it. So they just quietly just let me pass without ever having to try again, which just set me up great for the Marine Corps. Yeah, <laughs> that is as this military is as it gets. It's like, OK, we just keep this in house. Everyone, yeah. we keep this in house yeah. and we'll just move him I along. I think his dad might have contact with his local representative. Yeah. Which yeah. Hmm. Let's just pretend that the pass rate on all these multiple choice exams is 25%. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll move from there. Yours, so basic training, yours is completely different from ours. You Oh, yeah. Uh, what, when you guys were talking about, like, cleaning the weapons and everything, I was like, how does that even happen? Because, like, every everything with, like, live fire during basic training, there's, like, the fire barrels at the end. So you, like, you literally have to fire the weapon into a barrel of sand so there's no possibility of that happening. So I'm just like, what? How did everybody skip Fire Barrel Day? What is happening, dude? Fire, fire Barrel, barrel Day. <laughs> <laughs> Never skip Fire Barrel Day. Yeah, it's very important. Otherwise, I'm you over here it. just like wondering how the fuck you can accidentally have one round left in a saw. Oh no no, That's they found like seven other. Uh, oh yeah, saws they, with rounds. Did they just up fucking rip the belts out? Like what the fuck? It how was like raining. I remember it was a super rainy day and it was muddy, and I, I just, people were just probably were not paying attention to it because. And this was, I think, this was like November, December in Southern California. It gets fucking cold. Yeah, and everybody just wanted to get out of there. So everybody a lot just of went full pencils down. Dude, yeah. Just fucking. yeah, yeah. So like for for people who don't know, the the saw is an open bolt, uh, full auto, obviously squad automatic weapon with a belt feeding out of it. So it's like, all right, you lift the top cover, take the belt out. How the fuck do you keep a round in that gun? I don't know. I'm, mud? I, I have no idea. That's oh, yeah, crazy. they were not getting clean that much. Other than, like, during that, those segments, I guarantee you, it was just like... Yeah, there was nothing happening between a bunch of 19-year-olds handling them for the first time. This is when you're... And you're just shooting blanks, probably, for, like, blanks in live rounds, right? <laughs> Um, we were doing live that oh, they, they were all time. live rounds. Oh, okay. Yeah. And look at it. Like when you're shooting on, they will build mounts. The same weapon platform will get used over and over. And you're, you're not talking like a thousand rounds. You're talking like tens of thousand. Yeah. Rounds just being fired. Enough that it's a smooth bore by the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, mean, I don't know if it's still the case, but back then we still had a lot of ammo left over from like Vietnam that we were still burning through. This was in the early 2000s. Oh, that good cat piss smell when you <laughs> shoot that stuff. Yeah. 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 Dude, it would be a mountain. <laughs> like, I, I don't know if you did like the big range days where in the vehicles and you'd have like four day range days and everyone would shoot from the same spot on these like uh, assaulting the objectives or any of that. And it would be a, a case like a hill of just 50 cal or five, five, six, yeah. or seven, six, two, a like hill. I'm not exaggerating. It is a mountain. You could slide down on brass and then you'd have to go pick it all up and sort it. Oh, I fucking hate it. Hey, Eli, you want to help me thank one of our favorite sponsors today? Eli? Oh my god, not again! Got him. She, she sure does make the most comfortable boxer briefs <laughs> I've ever worn or you've ever worn. I'm wearing a pair of sheath underwear every time you hear from me. And I'm taking them. It's the only underwear I own and the only underwear Eli steals from me. Sheath. And it is the best. The most comfortable boxer briefs you'll ever put on your body. Their stretchy fabric is made out of moisture wicking technology. They're super soft, they keep everything cool and comfortable and in the right place. Make your franken beans happy. My twig and berries used to be hot and uncomfortable. Now, with sheath underwear, my twig and berries love life. And it's like a little AC. And now, my little berries have their own home. Please stop talking about your twig and berries. Head over to sheathunderwear.com and use code UNSUBSCRIBE for 20% off. That's sheathunderwear.com, code UNSUBSCRIBE for 20% off. Yeah. So a lot of those days were like, you know, all, all the ammunition needs to be expended. Like, we're not taking any ammo out of here. All this needs to be gotten rid of. And a lot of friends of ours got rid of it. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> got rid of it. Yeah, and that's yeah, the thing. No, is like th This case is spent. Don't <laughs> worry about why it hasn't been opened yet. The military can ruin anything. And so even like, yeah, on days like that, shooting machine guns, it's like, I don't even want to do this anymore. I want to go home. <laughs> Yeah, the, One it, Tree Hill yeah. is on. <laughs> it's, it's like the King of the Hill bit where he makes Bobby just smoke the cigarettes yeah, yeah. over and over again. He, and he gets addicted to yeah. it. <laughs> like, oh, dang it. Dan. <laughs> God <laughs> damn it, point, Bobby. He's like, I don't think I enjoy this anymore. And then, oh, so you did your uh, military stand. You did uh, with the x-ray. And then getting out, you're like, okay, I'm done with this. My favorite part, though, is 
you were at the VA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I get <laughs> out. All basically, good stories start. Yeah, yeah, basically, I end up separating because I get I uh, I have like a back problem. I end up having to have a back surgery. I start having like uh, breathing problems, which we find out is like the barracks that we're staying in is like an old building that they put like overflow in, and it's covered in mold and stuff. Never. But I start having these like breathing like almost like asthma attacks, but I've never had asthma before. So now I'm having panic attacks about having breathing attacks that get so bad that I'm like blacking out. And so they eventually they're just like, hey, you can't be here anymore. <laughs> so I get out, uh, I go home. They eventually they're like, okay, you have like anxiety and depression and this other stuff. And I was like, okay, cool. And then a decade later, a uh, nurse at the Cape Coral VA is like, hey, has anyone ever told you you might be autistic? And I was like, the fuck you said? <laughs> 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 Who the fuck starts a conversation that way? Yeah. <laughs> And uh, then she, she was like, no, like my nephew, it, like you have like seven of the same traits as him. And I was like, uh, OK, so she gave me some resources. I took some online tests and then I start seeing like stuff for ADHD. And I'm like, oh, OK, so I'm not autistic. I have ADHD. I reached out to the University of Florida Center for Autism and Related Disabilities because it's the only place in Florida that can diagnose adults. And I was like, hey, I think I have ADHD, but all these tests keep saying I have autism. Like, I need to rule this out so I can get an ADHD diagnosis. They're like, yeah, come on in. They have me do all these additional tests. I come in for the observation appointment. They start going through my results. And 10 minutes into the appointment, the doctor's like, let me stop you right there. <laughs> Guess what you got? I bet when you were joining, too, your recruiter knew. He's oh, like, I'm not oh, going to say dude, a fucking thing. Recruiters we Recruiters get... love us, dude. Yeah. We had this whole conversation last night. because like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I can tell, like, watching your bits, you stim. I was like, the recruiter, yeah. you were like, I would love to join. And they're like... Now, this is an easy one. He's going to follow instructions to a T. It's like, oh, I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you'd know how to properly clean a saw. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, let him work around heavy equipment. He's going to love that it. Is legit. When Do he we saw, have a department that my... handles trains? <laughs> He saw my ASVAB scores and he's like, oh, we're going to love this little motherfucker, dude. <laughs> it was 100% because we talked about this. Like, because people ask me after shows, they're like, how are you in the army if you stim and you're autistic? And it's like, okay, I stim and like I, I get worse in front of people because of the anxiety of everyone being singled out, right? In the army, you only get singled out if you're fucking up. Right. So like it's super easy to blend in and camouflage with everyone else. And if it's like like there's structure that's good for your brain. And then there's also the like if you ever spaced out and forgot what the fuck to do, just look at the guy next to you and just do whatever the fuck he's doing. And you're caught back up. Oh, I imagine like, the like, army actually, is so good. Like we do so well in the military just because it's like, oh, fuck. Yeah, dude. Just the routine, we give them a system. the yeah. regiment, everything like that's got to be yeah. an autistic haven, actually, now that I think about it. Yeah. Dude, that, that, He's that, like, I was thriving. That, that, and the black ball yeah. killed me. That was our safe space. Dude, that's yeah. our safe space. Is the military. I would have been the highest ranking autistic soldier in the history of the army if that black mold wasn't there. I just, dude, legit. And, you get it, and I got, then you have the three M earplugs. So yeah. you're like, oh, this is great, dude. I was, <laughs> dude, I was the high speed ass kid in basic training. Like our drill, our drill sergeants, like in the battalion, like picked me and my like battle buddy to represent our company for like the battalion like birthday party thing. So we had to like dress up as soldiers from like every war the battalion had ever fought in kind of thing. So like I got Vietnam, he got Gulf War. So like they legit. Now, now it sounds like they were like, get the special needs ones to dress Dude, up. They'll yeah, like it. No, that they'll was exactly it. it. He's like, hey, you know what? We're trying to raise some money for the, <laughs> for the <laughs> officer's ball. Dude, let's parade these special needs kids around and get as much money as possible, at least tight ones. Put them in little outfits. And they'll love it. First we fight. Yeah, oh, right. yeah. It's like, oh, they're hey, so happy. Hey, call the newspaper and make a wish. They're going to love this, dude. <laughs> Look, he thinks he's soldier. Yeah. Yeah. Look at him. They think they're people. <laughs> Because, I mean, Jack, you had to have people you, in your basic where you're like, 100%. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, and back, <laughs> then, and back in those days, that that the word autism was just starting to become a thing said commonly. Like, before that, like, when I was 12, I looked back at, like, one kid that everyone picked on. Like, oh, fuck, that kid was autistic. But, like, there was no name yeah. Nope. For it was it just back retarded. Then. Yeah, you, it was yeah. just retarded. Was, you yeah. were literally it retarded was, or normal. There yeah, was no, exactly. Yeah, no, no, that's how we lived uh, my entire childhood. 
And then what? And yeah. But yeah, um, I mean, I had Tourette's syndrome. I had to lie about that shit. Yeah. yeah. I didn't Wait. get diagnosed until I was 30, but all the signs were there. Yeah. Dude, I had a teacher sit my mom down at like a parent teacher conference and tell my mom in like, fifth, sixth grade, she's like, your son is one of the n most neurotic children I've ever seen. And my mom turned to me and goes, neurotic. Is that like, <laughs> does that mean like Jewish, but not Jewish? And I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> It I turns know, out that's a hundred percent. I know he's a gentile. Yeah. Yeah. He's very goyamy, you know. <laughs> Wait, Jack, you have fucking Tourette's. Yeah, I got diagnosed when I was eight. Yeah, I had to lie to my recruiter. They care about those things. Is it just like ticks or like what's your yeah, thing? Yeah, ticks. The verbal thing is extremely rare. Everyone, you know, and then people like, oh man, he's got yeah, he's got Tourette's, that's why he's cursing. I'm like, no, I just have a potty mouth. Yeah. What's your ticks? Um, you know, it's not as bad now as when I was a kid, but I do this thing with my hands where I do these little crab fingers. We call it um, stimming. Some neck, <laughs> some neck stretching, and um, I like pop my knees in certain ways. If you see me, um, if you see me do that, you know, when like guys have their balls stuck to their legs and they spread their legs out, that uh, people always assume my balls are stuck to my legs, but that's one of my ticks is I spread my legs out and shit like that. Yeah. No shit. Yeah, and like just, every guy knows here, what he's talking he's just about. He's down here like yeah. pancaking his thighs. He's just like, oh yeah, that's yeah, the good yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's right just there. that's a tick of mine. <laughs> oh. Yeah, my balls yeah. are fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Jack that scratches and my balls are fine. My balls, <laughs> I guarantee you, you've seen me ticking before, and you probably just didn't think you think it. No, I don't look at ticks like stimming. I'm well, very good at stim. Like I know stimming instantly. What's like, stimming? Stimming is like how his like you'll like see the my, yeah oh yeah 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 stuff or yeah my, my, my and... mine's uh, just it's I I've been doing that one for like twenty years yeah so I really wonder yeah, so, about that so, so it's literally it's the same it's like tomato tomato whatever yeah. it's stimming ticks it's uh, ticks is the old name for it and now some people just don't like the word so. oh really yeah. Oh my they, god! They don't like Pe ticks? people with yeah. fucking Tourette's so, syndrome. So kind of like the same thing. Remember when everybody got like everybody got mad at Lizzo for she used the word spaz in one in some of her lyrics, and they're like, "Oh, that's making fun of people with like stems," and you know. And I was like, I, "Fucking, I'm a spaz, dude. People called me a spaz my whole life." I used to do a lot of Tourette's syndrome they're, jokes. You're like, "That's my yeah." Word. Before yeah. before and, but people with Tourette's were all babies about and it. Spaz. <laughs> That's what, the, what was your question you were going to say with the tism or, or the stimming? Oh, or? yeah, uh, that's something that I'm really curious about because, like, stim, uh, stimming is, like, uh, it, like people with autism, like, need some sort of, like, stimulation and some shit like that. Yeah. But, like, that that's what they're starting to say nowadays is, like, the correlation between autism and ADHD is, like, super heavy. Uh, uh, yeah, dude, the score, that Venn diagram is almost a, just a fucking circle. Dude, yeah. it's so it's close. It's a lot of overlap. It's, oh, yeah. Hmm. Um, and uh, so that's literally, I was trying to get uh, rule out autism to get the ADHD diagnosis. And they're like, nope, full tism, dude, you got it. And I was like, fucking cool. And then three years <laughs> later, they're like, hey, and also. <laughs> 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 Years later, they're By like, the hey, way. you know that stuff that therapy hasn't helped yet? We're going to give you this other medication because surprise. <laughs> you got that. <laughs> like, oh, Jesus. no, this sucks. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I know. Dude, like the way all that, that is, it's just a turbo booster booster for the processor, dude. So like now it's like I have like I still process shit. <laughs> He's running weird. a jailbroken just, computer. <laughs> that's it, dude. That is the whole shit. Like that is like when people talk about like the processing and like the social communication breakdowns between like autism and like neurotypical people. It's exactly that. It's like trying to fucking send a document from like a like a MacBook to a fucking PC, and it's like, well, I don't have like notes, and you don't have like Google like Word documents. So now you got to fucking just copy the text into a notepad. <laughs> <laughs> no, like literally, have you ever had a it's conversation? It's my favorite conversation in a long time. If, you've ever, know, if you ever have a conversation with an autistic person or they're included in a social activity and they like make a joke and everybody's like, what the fuck is he talking about? It's because he's made seven more connections in his brain to the conversation than anyone else has. So he's six degrees of Kevin Bacon and you guys are all just like, who the yeah. fuck is Kevin Bacon? So yeah, in reality, <laughs> <laughs> you normies are slow as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> you ever thought about playing chess? Might work to your advantage. Maybe but okay. So we we talked about this. I've had I've I've like the kind of like rotating hobbies where you'll do something for four months, get great at it, and then you're like, this is fucking boring now, and then you move on. But I don't have the kind of brain space where I can keep that information in the hard drive. So like three fucking hobbies later, that first hobby is fucking jetted out, dude. I defrag the hard drive, delete all of that shit. Yeah. So that's the problem with chess. I as a kid, I was really fucking good at chess. Because you have to I think don't ahead. Remember, you I, have to think seven steps yes, ahead. But now I don't remember the rules of chess. 
You're just like, yeah, really? at one no point, shit. yeah, at one point I was literally like fucking like in a club, like on a chess team. And now I fucking, I don't Not remember all the rules. I'm like, you, this piece can do this. Yeah. <laughs> right. This is the, this is the L shaped one. Right. Yeah. I just like drill sergeants. Cause being a drill sergeant for somebody, like if you were one of my recruits, I'd be like to the other, other drill sergeants, I'd be like, he's autistic as fuck. You guys realize that, right? Does You're anything doing good, need AJ? organizing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, that, <laughs> structure. that's happened before. <laughs> I read an article about uh, a kid that they put in the Marine Corps who he, uh, it wasn't that he was undiagnosed. The recruiter was such a sleazeball, he literally picked him up from a fucking home. Oh, God. Yeah, and, oh, put, him in the, and put him in basic training, and like every time the drill instructor would yell at him, he would just yell back, like a, a, like a fear yell. And they, the... Um, they basically figured out what was going on. They took the kid out and the my, my buddy, uh, Pat was oh. there and he goes, the drill instructor comes out once they get, they send the kid off and they're out processing him. And uh, that recruiter probably went to fucking jail. Uh, the drill instructor as a meathead drill instructor, what he walks in to address the rest of the recruits. Uh, y'all remember private Johnson? Uh, he's no longer going to be with us. Uh, he's retarded. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm not saying he's stupid. He is a literal retard. Yeah. <laughs> and meanwhile, yeah. meanwhile, he's not the, in the program because he's the mascot now. <laughs> meanwhile, the recruiter gets picked up by the FBI. They're like, hey, only we can do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, he dear. thinks that recruiter yeah. got arrested. That yeah. recruiter got promoted. <laughs> Would you like to work for the FBI? <laughs> We've got some terror plots that need to be planned and then stopped. Oh my God, it's Jason Bourne. <laughs> the dude's just struggle hey, busting. guys. <laughs> struggle busting with life. Jesus yeah. Christ. That, that's evil shit if he knew. I mean, yeah, he had yeah. to. Dude, wait, he picked I, him up from a home, an adult home. Dude, there's easier ways to meet the quota. Yeah. Dude, during the surge, though, they yeah. would... Yeah, you could have just this, gone this to a halfway house. This would have been that period. This this would have been that period. During that time frame, like, it, the bar was set very low, Brandon. Like, that was the felons. You could get in if you had felonies because they would waive the felony. <laughs> mm -hmm. You had your choice. It's like, hey, do you want to go to jail or do you want to join the military? Actually, we, a buddy of mine, that, that's how he got to the military. Dude, I'm pretty sure that's what happened with my recruiter. He was like, he knew something was up and he was just like, eh, if they figure it out, they'll waive it. Yeah, I guarantee that. You were like, yeah, I'm going in the military. Dude, I literally, when he <laughs> I, told, like, I have a yeah. story about okay. that. <laughs> so, oh, uh, Eli, I cannot wait for my HelloFresh to get here. What is HelloFresh? With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skips the trip to the grocery store and yeah. count on HelloFresh to make cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Number one. This fall, you've got places to be, and standing in the checkout line isn't one of them. Leave the meal planning and grocery shopping to HelloFresh. You know why I love HelloFresh? Because I freaking hate grocery shopping. I hate it. I hate it. I despise going to the grocery store and waiting in line and doing anything like that. But when it's at my doorstep, I'm a happy camper. Let HelloFresh get the groceries and save you some cash with pre-portioned meals delivered right to your door. Buddy, how easy was HelloFresh? Well, an idiot like me could even do it. It comes in a box ready to go. Everything portioned out with instructions. You just cook. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 unsubscribe and use code 50 unsubscribe for 50% off plus free shipping. Wait, you get 50% off and free shipping? It's awesome. HelloFresh.com slash 50 unsubscribe. <laughs> I was going to, I, my recruiter found me on a college campus. I was a freshman. I'd started uh, and I already decided I was going to do the x-ray tech program there. And he's like, oh, we'll teach you to do the same thing and you'll get a paycheck instead of having to pay for it. And I was like, that, I'm not good at math, but that adds up, you know? And uh, then I did the ASVAB, and he's like, oh, you scored a 97. You can literally pick any job you want out of this book. And I was like, ooh, okay. Well, since now I know that, like, I couldn't afford to go to fucking, like, Embry-Riddle, like, to do, like, aviation school because I wanted to be a pilot. So I was like, done, pilot. And he's like, you're too tall. And I was like, fuck you, man. <laughs> they yeah. still do that, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, no shit. Well, in 2006, 2007, they did. Uh, but yeah, they had like height requirements and they're like, you're literally too tall to ride that ride. And I was like, all right, well, I guess six. I'll stick with the, I'm 6'4". Yeah, you're a taller dude. He's a tall autism man. Yeah, dude, I'm the stretched out kind. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you couldn't become a pilot and you're just like, how big is your dick? Around you? Not big, dude. Okay. <laughs> Not big. <laughs> Jack's disappointed. Like, Fuck. Yeah, dude, I think, I think, over here. Yeah, I think when the, like, when the tism <laughs> activated, dude, my dick stopped growing because my brain needed more blood flow. You oh, know? Yeah. So, 
Well, yeah, you know, in old Greek culture, there's a reason why they gave them those hot, beautiful bodies and those tiny dicks. Is big dicks were looked at as people being dumb and they were meatheaded. Yeah, they yeah, were yeah. savages. You yeah. were breeding. Yeah, stuff. so you're just part of the Greek elite, pretty yeah, much. That's it. Which yeah. proves I'm my point thinker, that dude. intellectuals have tiny dicks. Oh, I mean, historically, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm both, dude. I'm an intellectual meathead. So your dick should be like at least regular it's size. It's regular okay, size. That's what you're <laughs> See, it's, just, it's like I'm average. It's what I'm just for every viewer out there. I have an average penis. Just yeah. really getting that point it's across. It's normal some would say, size. Some would say too much. What about you, Jack, dude? How d- fucking your military? Yeah, how big is your dick? Yeah, how big is your penis, monster. Jack? Do you know how big a, your dick has to be to rock a mustache? Maybe I'm compensating. Wait, Jack, you how old are you now? Did you just hit forty? Just hit forty. When was this? Yeah. This is like the other day. Yeah, about a month ago. Yeah. Oh, did yeah. I text you happy birthday or was I a piece I'm of sure shit? I'm sure. I shut down on my birthday. Like, um, I, I don't handle a lot of text messages and shit like that well because that pressure to respond and then now you're in conversations. And yeah. I, I'm a terrible texter to begin with. The, uh, the only time I'll See, focus, uh, I'll yeah. put effort into texting is for a woman and my parents. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I, usually, I typically shut down. So if you did... Uh, I wouldn't have saw, seen it anyways. Everyone at this table has autism. Let's Dude. just face that. Literally, <laughs> I, I, I need you to explain I that. Pull- watching Brett. <laughs> I'm like, yes. Every day I'm like, preach it, brother. I was literally with like pulling your out my social phone. following, do you look at your own messages? Or do Bro, you have somebody I'll that does that? On this side of the fucking phone, missed calls, 505, yeah. oh, missed texts, yeah. 1100. Yes. Fucking, look at my emails. Look, look at my fucking emails, Jack. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, baby! It's a hundred and hundred and eighty-two thousand unanswered. Okay, fucking mine aren't emails. like that, but that's literally like, because I turned off half of my notifications. But still, same twenty-four missed calls, fucking a hundred and something unread. Yeah. 7, you're not a dick. Emails. You just have a little bit of anxiety. Yeah, yeah. dude, I'll get to it when I get to it. I'm, I'm sorry, mom. <laughs> I love everyone I'll back. I the, promise. It is the idea of like. So unfortunately, my tism is also it has to stay at zero. So I have to like click on everything. I used to be like that. Yeah. So I and just then I gave reset up. it because if I give up, I will literally do like, it. Just disappears. You just forget, and you're like, no. Oh, DM yep, the Discord and stuff like that. I have an unread message box of just like flooded stuff, and now DMs on IG, the other two categories. I like I don't even open those anymore because I'm like, nope, stress, don't. Like, I'm going to freak the fuck out about it. I'm not trying to change the subject. I really fucking like that shirt. Thank you. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It got a compliment. Eli feels pretty. Pink. (laughs) I love my color pink. I don't know why that's just become a thing, but dear God, it works. I'm like, yes. When when we did my fight, like, I specifically told Bunker, I'm like, we need three regular cream color shirts and one pink one. And I rocked that pink shirt. Yeah. Damn right you did. Fucking just still tip. got blood on it. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like the bro hugs. I'm like, yeah. what's that? Oh, it's Brandon's blood. It's good. Or it's a lot. Mostly, it most was- it was James. I, I thought I was bleeding more than I was because I of all the. I just saw like I hugged you guys and then I saw the blood and I was like, oh, I'm fucked up. <laughs> oh yeah. Did you guys watch those fights last night? They were oh, awful. God. It was Ugh. terrible. Um, I, and. I never had an opinion about the Dylan Dennis, uh, uh Logan Paul and shit. I and I didn't even know that much about it, but that guy was like disgraceful. Like he should feel ashamed of himself. They're both kind of shitty people. Yeah. Uh, like if you just look at just all their like fraud shit and like all the different like pump and dumps they've done, like they're they're shitty people, good businessmen. But like the, those fights were like I can I can I can set that aside if you're entertaining to watch. Those were just shit fights. They were no. fucking yeah. awful. What bothered me the most too, I just I got to thinking about this. I watched the post fight when that uh, Tommy Fury and KS one. I I know Tommy Fury is from <laughs> Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to KS one racing. Dude. I, fucking, <laughs> I want that is just gonna be KSI, KS but like. Oh, KSI, with, yeah. Uh, yeah. With missing one chromosome <laughs> or added one, it's just me, KS1. Oh, KS1. <laughs> uh, well, that, that Fury, the younger brother, he's from Manchester. He's from where the fight was. And then I'm pretty sure KSI is from, like, London. And when they were chatting at each other after <laughs> the fight, I couldn't understand. They talked in full English, which full English is 
Un, you can't understand it. Talking I like your, Brad Pitt. I saw and your stories about that. Man. Bothered me He's just like, so hey. much. This was their back and forth. Listen here, bro. My opponent that was a kind of a run. No, no, I might. So to make a doubt, it's out. And they did that back and forth, and I got so fucking angry. And I started thinking how <laughs> the <laughs> other day I was watching. David Ortiz, a great baseball player uh, who never started speaking English until he was 20 years old and came over here and played baseball and they started shoving microphones in front of his place. He talks like this. He's from the Dominican Republic, man. I can understand him perfectly. Arnold Schwarzenegger didn't speak a leak, lick of English from rural Austria. Moves here, learns the language. Everybody knows what Arnold's saying. Ichiro Suzuki, who's not even from a freaking European language family. He, from Japan, didn't come over to the United States to play baseball until he was 28 years old, did his entire Hall of Fame induction speech in English. You can understand what Ichiro has to say. Eli, from, Eli from two different countries that yes. don't speak English. How the fuck? <laughs> how the fuck do these two knuckleheads from England not be able to speak the fucking English language? Yeah, how do they sound like two mastiffs growling at each other through a, through a fence, dude? Just like... <laughs> I was watching your stories about that last night. It was fucking hilarious. It bothered me. <laughs> I love when Jack gets Why off. do we keep... <laughs> <laughs> you're just ah, yeah. ah. the yeah. fight suck yeah. because it, it sucks for just at a boxing level that is how you take away from boxing you have this huge influx of people you get everyone riled up they get paydays but it's it hurts the sport because now you have a dude laying on his back doing whatever Dennis did that was yeah. fucking stupid clamoring oh. You know, the, the the sport of boxing is going to hell in a handbasket but Prime is going to sell for 20% more now uh, they did that job really good. Yeah. Dude, MMA ruined boxing. Yeah. Is what it is. It's like now, like, what would have been an entertaining boxing match, like, 25 years ago before MMA, now you're like, what is happening, well, dude? Dude, we watched the fucking fights right after, like, uh, after the Dylan Dennis, uh, Logan Paul, all that shit was done. We watched the UFC fights right after. Like, Those are athletes. Back to back. Right. Those are and athletes. And then you're like, oh, fuck, that's what a real fight looks that's, like. Dude, that's what I'm saying. Like, a UFC prelim fight is better than a pay-per-view boxing fight Literally. just because shh. Shit's happening, and those MMA like, fighters now—they're—they're they're coming from the generation, you know, when when, next when it popped power. off. Yeah, when we and we were watching it, it was the Dells and the Coutures. Those guys, like, yeah, I wrestled in college, then I just learned to take a punch to the face, and they—they they kind of they made the sport popular. But these guys now. They didn't come from one background, you know, wrestling or five. boxing. They have been doing MMA since five. They have been learning everything because it's what—it's that switch from. Um, uh, who's the American Japanese guy that was doing karate for the long? Uh, oh, Sage Northcutt. Oh, Sage. I, it, I mean, Sage is a good uh, example. And it was before him, he was uh, Machida. Machida was just a karate practitioner. Oh, yeah. And he's a world champion because he used karate in a different way. He was like, oh, these, I don't know grappling to the next level. And I don't know. Uh, Which he's Brazilian, people. right? Uh, yeah, I think he was a yeah. Japanese American guy, but oh, he would Machida? stand backwards. Uh, Machida might have been actually Brazilian, I but he would he fight was. backwards. So how he would fight, karate stand still, and he would attack when they would dive in or anything, and it worked. He would. It, that's how he got world champion in the UFC as a karate practitioner, and it was a weird offset. They're like, man, this that, is that must weird. have been like really early UFC. Two, like, yeah, because like, Ken Shamrock was a yeah, karate that was guy. Post Anderson Silva, because it was like the first five nine years was all different 12. shit, and then like after that was all BJJ. Yep. Yeah, yep. so it was uh, nine two thousand nine to two thousand twelve era. So this is still later. It was just that weird those one offs because then you'd have like yes you have uh, like as BJJ or strikers, then it Muay just high whatever yeah and then Mashita Mashita took it from. Um, Rashad Evans, yeah, right. He's That's a right. fucking, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, and he like Machida fought some like gangster B B J J and fighters. Like he he fought some top tier dudes and he beat them across the board. And did then you I, watch Ahsoka? By the way, oh, I need to. <laughs> <laughs> I need to watch Ahsoka. God damn it! <laughs> like I feel like we're talking about fighting on a podcast. And like oh god, like we've lost half the audience and doesn't go outside. <laughs> like no. <laughs> Video games, go! Military I, I, did, stories, I didn't go. fucking watch this. Oh, either. man, <laughs> you know what the big guy just got? Big Caleb? He bought a freaking, uh, an arcade, an actual arcade size arcade thing. I saw thing. that. That was pretty cool. But Ooh. it's got like... 400 games on it and you can download any game you want to it so and he, so he's got an actual arcade where he can play any arcade game 
from the last freaking 40 years that he wants to at any time. My it's kind buddy of a vibe. has that. He has like a, my buddy Jake Rubel that my tours with me. Smudger. He has like a, like a Joust Defender arcade cabinet, but it's got one of those like pie little computer things in it. Yeah. Oh, uh, the, uh, what do you call those? The rasp- like an emula- raspberry Pi. Yeah, raspberry yeah. Pi. There you go. And like the emulator or whatever. So it's all the arcade games, all the like Sega games and stuff. Yeah. You can all, yeah, that's awesome. And there, and you know, I, when I was thinking, okay, that's, Minimum five thousand bucks. He said, counting shipping, it was only nine hundred bucks. You're shitting yeah. me. Yeah. Oh, dude, I would totally. I'm buying one of those as soon as yeah. we get off this that, podcast. That's before you fuckers can, order. before you fuckers can bid against me on eBay, <laughs> I'm buying one for myself. Fuck you, yeah. dude. I He'll have a feeling. Own it before this gets published. I, I think they're the only ones doing it, and uh, they're pretty new. So I would get it now because they're going to go up in price. Yeah. Uh, it's called a. Uh, Am I okay to plug random shit on yes, here? Yes, of course. It's called a Legends Ultimate Arcade full size game machine. Uh, it's rad as shit. What's this uh, old? Uh, I, I I need to get an arcade. I'm surprised this house doesn't have a fucking arcade in it. How we, often we are you guys that. hanging out here yeah, outside good. of the show? Yeah, never. Front room. Yeah. Dude. Yeah, I know the front room. Like we never hang out here. We have like new things that we're doing upstairs, adding on to it. We got a business in the works. Although there is a lot of cool nerdy shit around here. Like you guys don't even see. Like there's like fucking Star Wars art like behind the cameras mm-hmm. and shit. Like it's it's not like Auschwitz in here. Like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's, you there's all- two <laughs> nude cutouts of Henry Cable. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. And Ryan Reynolds. Oh yeah, <laughs> just looking sexy. What are you saying, Jack? Jack, you good? He got caught up in that handsomeness. <laughs> dude, Henry Cavill. He made eye contact. Like, man, I want to fuck eye Henry Cavill, dude. <laughs> <laughs> just big H, bro. <laughs> just big H, just looking like a, a dime piece. Dude, right? you, think a, you, know how, you think a man like that gets fucked? Oh, dude. You, know <laughs> you think man, a man like that gets <laughs> fucked? You know how you see an English person and you can tell they're English? They do have like a, an emaciated look about them. That I, you could never. That that guy looks like he's from freaking uh, New York, born and bred. Uh, yeah, and, he's and a lawyer from Manhattan. Yeah, the emaciated look. It's like, yeah, they don't eat McDonald's once a week. Like, <laughs> yeah, like American. Those emaciated he looks, fucks he looks, in the UK. He looks American colored, man. He really does. He does. Yeah, you always forget he yeah. is. He's a, not gaunt. When I heard him speak in his natural voice for the first time, it fucked my head up. Oh, because he always plays American characters. Yeah, yeah. It's like him and uh, Hugh Laurie, uh, House. Hugh, Hugh Laurie, yeah. yeah, and then Christian Bale. And, oh, uh, I always forget yeah. that. Idris Elba. Like, yeah, Butler? every time. Yeah. Christian Bell's what? Is he Australian or is he Christian Bell's British. English? British. He's Welsh. 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 Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. British. He, yeah. He's just the perfect actor on. Like, he's ever. good. Yeah. He's one of the best, in my opinion. I think he's top tier on method acting. You have him only- and Daniel Day Lewis, dude. Yeah. Attention all my bearded beasts from stubble to Maine. If you didn't already know, Manscaped now sells beard products. You heard that correctly. The leaders in below the waist grooming changed the game. With their beard hedger pro kit. And now they're going a step further with a brand new handyman. G-Van, punch in, punch boom, in, boom, punch boom. in. Boom. An electric face shaver for a quick and convenient way to achieve a clean shaven look. Whether you're looking to sharpen up your neckline or give your face that smooth finish, the handyman has you covered. Go to manscaped.com and use code UNSUB for 20% off and free shipping. It's time to go from 5 o'clock shady to yeah, baby. No one likes a weird beard, so say goodbye to your stubble trouble with the Manscaped Beard Hedger. I have a weird beard because my genetics. Looking for something, dare I say, smoother? Look no further than Manscaped's new handyman's face shaver. If you're like us, you know clean shaven is a hassle. Ew. That's why you use this. The handyman by Manscaped. So get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com if you use code unsub. They'll get 20% off and free shipping with code unsub at manscaped.com. I don't do it. And uh, yeah, you only have a handful of method actors now. Daniel Day Lewis. Uh, it's not everybody. It's nobody they wants die. to work with yeah. them. It's because <laughs> they die. <laughs> it's because <laughs> they die. <laughs> right. They get that one character and they go to method and then they're gone. Yeah. Dude, R.I.P. Heath Ledger. Like, thank God Heath Ledger wasn't around when they were cast, <laughs> when they were casting for Dahmer. Oh, oh yeah. just start fucking kidnapping Yeesh. people.
So I just really felt like I needed to get it. That's there. what that. That's I feel what, like that's what that, that army Jared hammer Leto, dude was that, preparing who's the most for. Punchable motherfucker in Hollywood, Jared Leto. That's what he was doing when he was getting ready for his Joker role. He was doing like some real fucking. Just oh, un- yeah, he unnecessary like, shit to the other cast. Yeah, he like, like nailed- you don't need to do that. If you're a good actor, you don't need to be a fucking weirdo. You can just show up and do your job. Yeah, he like, like nailed acting- Margot Robbie like a dead ferret or yeah. something. Yeah, I feel like method acting is just an excuse for actors to, to be, be a assholes. dick. Yeah. Ooh, I mean, Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf. Well, he's just crazy. Yeah, I, he, he may just <laughs> be crazy. Yeah, but that's the method, I like dude. those that's weird things he was doing. Acting, the, the, my favorite was when Shia LaBeouf s- streamed himself sitting in a theater for like two days straight watching his own movies. Oh, Brilliant. yeah, I forgot he did that. Yeah, my favorite he, was uh, when he was doing the Fury, the Tank movie. He wouldn't he shower was, and all that. He wouldn't that. shower, and he cut his own face and would pick the scabs between takes to make the wound look fresh. Yeah. That's awful. Totally. I know. You know what? For those kind of budgets, you can hire a makeup person. (laughs) I didn't know he went through that level. Like, I've listened to Shia LaBeouf on how he talks now about his old mindset and how he was. Because he was like, yeah, I'm ashamed of uh, how I used to be as a piece of shit. He's like, I was just full Uh, of crap. I was a child actor actor who went off the deep end. Because he would, I mean, it would be hard. Imagine from a young age, you are just presented the world and then everyone bows down to you on top of that. Yeah. That that would create a fucking issue. Like, yeah. Brandon, you got big in the last few years, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad. Like, I, I, I've talked about this before on the podcast, too. Like, I'm so glad because <gasps> I've been doing YouTube since technically like 2007. Like, yeah. just little YouTube channels. So you were, pro- you were 16, something like that? Uh, yeah, some, some, oh, well, yeah, no, way younger. It was like maybe like, I don't know, 10. Holy fuck. When I started, like, just started fucking around with video making and stuff like that. Uh, but, like, I, I didn't get popular by any meaningful degree until I was in my 20s, which I'm so thankful for. Dude, if I was, like, 16 and blew up, oh, yeah. I'd be an asshole. Yeah. I, I fully know Same. that. Like, I would be yeah. a fucking I didn't dad. start stand. I didn't get into stand-up until I was in my 30s at literally as a therapy like homework assignment. No shit. It's like, yeah, go really? be around people. Wait, go on. Well, that's a fucking... That yeah. doctor's... Dude, my my thing. You struggle my, I, with being in front of people. No, let them judge you. Yeah. Well, so my my well, yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like the like, worst like place the fucking, to get judged. It's like the fucking accountant where it's like, oh, he hates uh, loud noises and stimuli. He needs more of it. Like, yeah. It's like, well, but I mean, kinda, that kind of works. So, but it was it was an occupational therapist and like literally do, like doing talk therapy to reintegrate me into society because like way before COVID, like I, I got my first job as like in graphic design while I was still getting my bachelor's degree online was like working from home. So I was getting my degree online from home, working from home. And it reached a point where it's like, I looked up one day, it was like, oh, I haven't peopled in nine months. <laughs> I don't need to touch grass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I am grass. <laughs> <you know>? <laughs> 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 and, uh, but yeah, I started like after the diagnosis and working with the occupational therapist and stuff at a certain point. So you'd point, never thought of doing stand up before that? Uh, I had, I wanted to do stand up when I was like 25 and I was like married at the time. How and old are you know? I'm 35. 35. Okay. So, so yeah, yeah, I wanted to start like, yeah, a decade ago. Uh, but I was, again, like easily manipulatable and like. Because I like didn't know what it was, but I knew there was something off in my brain. It was one of those like I was easily open to suggestions. So as soon, I was like, I'm gonna so go do stand up. Like I wrote all these jokes, <laughs> and yes, yeah, like I wrote all these jokes. I'm gonna go to this open mic, and my ex wife at the time just right like the day before was like, Are you sure you think you're like funny enough that you're gonna talk in front of other people and they're that is gonna a hurtful enjoy it? thing and for a like, significant other to say. Yeah, That's, and then that, yeah. and then at that point I was like, You're right. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> fucking really? Yeah. That's honestly oh, yeah, one of those. Yes. Yes. Well, <laughs> what do you think now, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that is such an autism. Yeah. It's like, you're right. Oh, yeah. yeah, you're totally I've right. I've gotten should... standing ovations in arenas in front of thousands of people. Looks like you were wrong. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what's the Bob Barker line? <laughs> yeah. fucking, or, fucking somebody like guessed wrong, wrong, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so, yeah, I was at the time. Uh, it wasn't stand up. I, w- I wanted to make my own like adult animated cartoon series, but I was I was trying to teach myself like storyboarding, script writing, animation, like which is all exhausting. Of yeah, and so she, the my occupational therapist, literally was like, "You just put additional hurdles in front of you and the shit you need to get out of your brain to relieve that pressure is... on your executive function." So cut out the middleman, and she was like, "I want you to just take like three jokes." 
from like the show you've been writing and just go do to an open mic. And I was like, well, I can't exactly blah, blah, blah. And I was like, but I can write some more. And she's like, fuck, I'm going to do it. And, and then, then at that point, I had my medical marijuana prescription and my Welbutrin, like emotional regulation. And I was like, so like every stand up. Yeah, I was literally I was like, <laughs> wait, maybe I, maybe I can do this. Yeah. And then it happened. I went, I, think, I got laughs like on the first joke I ever told. And I was like, oh, which doesn't you're happen. hooked. Yeah. yeah. The, as soon as you get that, la it's lit like I've never done it before, but I assume it's what heroin feels like. Dude, it's just <laughs> that immediate, like you're like, oh, once it once it hits your bloodstream. Uh -huh. I told one joke and then I fell asleep and needed to be narc Yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> Boom. No, because I've, yeah. I've seen a lot of your uh, your stuff. Like, I, I didn't even know, like, I, I didn't know your name before yesterday, but I've seen your stuff before. And a lot of it's like the self deprecating kind of stuff. And it That's works it. so fucking well for you. I have a question. Yes. Uh, I, and I know it's different for everybody, but do the lights ever fucking jumble your brain? Uh, so they used to. So when I first started doing stand up, I would literally, I'd fully disassociate. I'd go on stage and I'd very still. I would, I could, I, I could be still. I didn't stim, but I. It was all of my willpower to just stand there and be still. So I would, and it was, but I was very flat, very monotone, no emotion, no expression, no nothing. And it wasn't until I figured out, like, I was literally with my therapist and I was talking about, I was like, oh, I told this joke and it didn't work. And she's like, wait, so you're telling jokes about autism, but you're afraid for people to see that you're autistic. And I was like, you bitch, you just, how do you just, <laughs> how do you just unlock, you know what I mean? Like, cause sometimes, I don't know if you've had this happen with your son. Like you might like be trying to explain something to him and he's just not getting it. And then you rephrase it in the one way that all of a sudden he's just like, Oh, unlocked. Yeah. Oh yeah. All the time. It was that it was, you're talking about autism, but you're afraid for people to see you as autistic. And I was like, motherfucker. Ding. Yeah. Cause you, it's like the Eminem eight mile thing. Right. It's like once once you call it out, it's like, oh, damn, that's part of the bit now and you can't use it against me. And you yeah. lean into it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Fucking full. And you have some it. good old fashioned mom spaghetti afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> I would, and literally because literally it'd be sometimes like in between jokes where I'd take a breath and like I'd start to stem or something or people would like you could hear it in my voice and people would be like, what's wrong with him? But because I wasn't just L owning it, you know, exactly. And so then I like I started like kind of tailoring my material to that. It's like, OK, I'm just right up front. Hey, you're probably wondering what's going on. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> you know, like that kind of shit. And just dealing with it right up front. And you've explained it in this one thing. It's it it resonated extremely quickly with me. It's like you see certain words and everything, they just the imagery just pops yes. in your head. Or yeah. so if it's like a joke or anything, it's like it just it's a image instead of like a word or whatever. Yeah. Huh? So Temple Grandin, who is like one oh. of the original like distributors of like, hey, this is what autism is, and like this is what we're capable of, kind of thing. Which now people hate her, but why? Uh, be, I guess because she's she said some stuff that like some of like the more like progressive parts of like the autism community Dude, di disagree with. But I, I'm gonna wait till so you're done. But I got a rant for that bullshit. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> the worst quick. fucking people in the yeah. world. No, I uh, swear to fucking god. Like you look at anything. Like I told you earlier, I used to do jokes about Tourette syndrome, and they, they would get like fucking flagged and taken down because mm -hmm. Tourette syndrome people were such little fucking babies. <laughs> and no, no. And then I was having a. Uh, we know a lot of people missing limbs from war, and uh, <laughs> one or two. I was talking to them. They have their community of amps. They're, they're like, <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> you missing that two piece yeah. of biscuit. <laughs> but there, there's like people in that amputee community that we don't want it to be called amputee, amputee. That's offensive. We want it to be called what the non. What fuck else uh, do you want to be called? Dude, I know. Non ambulatory so, Americans. No, it's like, we're able. But what it is, abled. it's these it, ADA it's always, recipient. Like, what the fuck? What happens like, is people have something that's like distinctly unique about them. And yes, they probably had to suffer with it alone at a, for a long time, but they think that they get to call the shots. Like they're the fucking only ones. Yeah. And, yeah there's people out there that's like, my experience is the only correct and, and way he, to experience this thing. And even if they didn't have that condition, they'd be bitches anyways. That, that's just how they're yeah. wired. They're wired to be babies. Yeah. Well, and there's also the, yeah, there's also the, we kind of had a, a, a conversation <laughs> about this. There's like the the group that like online that's like the oh I'm undiagnosed autistic. It's a huge. thing. It's a right huge now. thing. And like I then go get diagnosed or shut the fuck right. up. Well, and I I I do understand like as an adult like how hard <laughs> I, it was. I just to don't want to know. <laughs> right. 
But that, but I like, like that ambiguity in the back of my head. I just head. like he went against it. He went to get misdiagnosed. Yeah. He's like, I'm not fucking autistic. You, sir, you are autistic. Yeah. You're well, one of the worst I've ever seen. <laughs> well, but that's the thing. Like, like, can we study you? <laughs> like, in 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 a very small number of cases, there is a validity to self diagnosis, right? Like, if you are in a community that is too poor, there are no resources, things like that. Like, you can do all the research and just not be able to get to someone who can actually give you the diagnosis. I do understand that. But then there's other people who it's like you live in one of the biggest cities in the world. You're right next to one of the largest healthcare facilities in the world. You would get a diagnosis at any time so, you want. So real question though. You can't get a diagnosis. Real, real question. What is the advantage of getting a formal diagnosis? Uh, there's a couple. Like one, it's the like the like the validation, like in your own mind. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like if you've yeah. ever dealt with any kind of mental health care stuff, just like having someone like an expert tell you like, no, you're not crazy. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. sometimes you do need that. Eli! Hey! Eli! Where am I? How have you been sleeping so well in this Texas heat? Have you ever felt one of these ghost bed pillows? The cooling technology is mind-blowing. It's got to be one of the best parts about ghost bed. The cooling technology built into the pillows and mattresses really helps cool us down. Sleep wherever you want. Like your bed. Your ghost bed. <laughs> Ghostbed also offers bundles, so you can get everything you need. You don't even really need to think about it. Cooling pillows and sheets and frames and mattresses and everything. You get the best bang for your buck. Every mattress has a 20-year warranty, some with 25. So, and you can try it out for 101 nights. So if you don't like it, you can send it back. No hard feelings. Right now, GhostBed is offering 30% off everything if you use code unsub. 30% off everything at ghostbed.com slash unsubscribe. Just for your own like self-confidence and, and, and things like that. Because there's, there's well, a point. I, I see yeah, where yeah. you're going because it is like for you. You could be like, I'm yeah. ADHD <clears throat> and my, my stimming. Because if you don't know what stimming is, you like so literally, you know, you're just going to look like a weird Why am person. I like this? So what he's yes. doing right now is also stimming. Yeah, uh, any like if you Br see Brandon's like, like no, that's just alcoholism. Like, <laughs> Is that are you talking about me? Yeah, no, he's got the <laughs> no, 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 no. Like <laughs> people, Brandon, you've never noticed you do that with your hands. I um, do. I know. I <laughs> like. I just <laughs> always thought you were coming off a bender. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, both can be true, I guess. Okay, so Fuck. fun fact: I, you just got to call it autistic, like, autistic part of, person. <laughs> part of what took so long. God what's funny it. about the bender shit is part of what took so long for me to get diagnosed and even notice that shit was wrong was. I spent so much time in my 20s, like in the military and post-military. Self-medicating. Drinking. Yes, yeah. Yeah. drinking bro shit. And it was like, oh, it was no, like it wasn't a weird thing to pregame before you'd go out to the bar. And then, but then at a certain point you're, you're like, oh, I'm pregaming the pregame because there's, it's my friend group, but there's two people who aren't like in my head. They're not part of my circle. So I'm not comfortable with them. So I got to have a few drinks before I even go in here. So you're autistic and an alcoholic. Group. Well, yeah. At a certain point you realize you're like, oh, Welcome I'm doing this. So people don't notice this. And <laughs> rainbow. Yeah. yeah. That, I used so to I'm go just saying, you might be. <laughs> Cause there's, there's, it's not just hands. There's literally like hundreds of different like there's nail biting finger tapping foot tapping rocking humming a lot of that like a lot of the i think there's a lot of overlap too with like neat movement what non-energy what is that like neat movement where like you're just like tapping your leg for example yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. rhythmatic like, movement yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. it's like and it has to happen dude that's why i used to go so hard on my comedy for for years making fun of veterans is because I saw <laughs> Jack has it. He's starting this. Yeah, you might want to get off camera for this one, Brandon. <laughs> yeah, but there be the, the, you know seventy five percent of them are normal people that when they're done with it they go back and contribute and they just move the fuck. But you got this twenty five percent who are the biggest goddamn babies and they're so sensitive about shit they can't take a joke and they're they're obnoxious, right? Well, it's and, the it's the overcorrection. Yeah, which it happens with everything. It's like oh things were this way for so long and it's like now we want equality, so we're gonna swing things so far back in this direction yeah. that, that it pendulum. creates that it creates an Dude. unequal power vacuum back in the other we, direction. We yeah. talk it's, about veterans or some of like. Mm -hmm. Like a lot, a lot of you need a reality check. I'll let Jack finish his statement. No, but I'm just saying, man. <laughs> G-Van, we have to 
change that one real bleep it. Yeah. <laughs> That's demonetization, unfortunately. Really? I oh, yeah, so instantly. I'm glad I was off there. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was like. Eh. Who that? Okay, so can Who? I... You okay, can't be too much of a I silly goose. I can't say the S word. Yes. Yes. Okay. You can't mention people Ryan Reynoldsing themselves. Thank okay. You. Or you can say, yeah, the, the what is that, uh, honorable Sudoku. Because I've always wanted to do the bit where... Uh, uh, Oh, where no. someone's doing the 22 <laughs> push-up challenge, um, but they're so out of shape that they can only do uh, 15, so seven <laughs> veterans, you know, <laughs> Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> yeah, it's their see? fault because they're so out of shape. <laughs> Jack's really is just... But seven of them, a hundred percent, and the yeah. seven I like. And as you're struggling to like, you're struggling to try and keep going. They line them up. They line them up like, you better keep going, dude. You better keep He's going. A very sweaty Matt Best appears in front of you. <laughs> you get, you get like one. You get I'm one, trying, Matt. So you come get, on, bro. One you get, more. You get one more locked out. They're like, you're safe. He drops to his knees, just crying. That's like, what the PT dude. tests are for. Dude, that's, that's what the military. That's what the PT, PT yeah. test yeah. is for. You failed. Next time someone's <laughs> next you time failed, someone you failed them. Next time you someone posts, failed them. Next time someone posts a twenty two push up video, I'm just gonna comment like, "Thanks, man. I was gonna do it." <laughs> <laughs> Did you just Thank say thank God you, you on all those videos. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit! Thanks. That was a close one. That was a close one. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my yeah. god. Okay, Brandon, you were <laughs> or tell us. or even worse. You, you like cat like with the twenty two. You cut in and you go. Well, three of those were incorrect. So <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> well, three of those push ups weren't regulation. <laughs> Counted it. Just because they're half counted, so it's like the fight club out the fucking side of the mouth. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you cut in. You literally G-Man's cut in and be like, be well, like, three of those were a half count, so, and then you boom. cut to the fight club scene. <laughs> GV is just looking at the editing bar. He's like, I think this is a. Oh, I'm, being real? One more time. I'm being real careful right now, <laughs> Eli. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. it. So yeah, that was acceptable, I think. You have a story that you've not told. Oh, God. Yeah. That you were like, mm, mm, So this mm. was uh, like, I, I don't get embarrassed often. This was one of those moments. I mean, we're, it's concerning you've done YouTube, but you've been reading the comment section since you were 10. You've <laughs> developed some tough skin about things. Oh, oh it's it's yeah. terrible for your mental health. Yeah. Awful, awful. <laughs> to hear what thousands of strangers think about you at any waking moment. That's yeah, fucking My terrible. one tip of what it I say yesterday. It kills me a little inside. Don't read the comments. Never read the comments. I, re- I read <laughs> all of them. The com- I, I read all read of them, all too. Them. I read all of them. I reply to them. I do the whole... I die a little inside every day, dude. It's... But what happened to me is I was at the fucking airport. So I, I have a like a Mystery Ranch three day assault pack. Like be- best backpack I ever fucking owned. Shout out Mystery Ranch, I guess. They're fucking great. Uh, but it's got like little slots for patches or whatever. People send me dumb patches and shit. And like some of this stuff I just think is funny. So I've got one of them, the one that I've got on the back of my backpack now is like, you know, like a ranger tab. Except instead of that, it says special needs. Oh yeah! <laughs> so I, I just thought I thought that was funny as shit because like I'm, I never did anything in the military. Oh like, my I can't God. take Could, any like stolen valor or whatever. Where's the story going? I'm already liking the story. I'm still. Because <laughs> you have a patch. I literally so, started rocking back and forth as soon as he said he got a special <laughs> needs patch. I was like, I gotta get one of them. I'm standing in a line to board the fucking plane at an airport, <gasps> and there is <laughs> behind me someone taps on my shoulder, and it's this really nice lady. Excuse me, sir. Um, because it's a it's a multi-cam camo backpack. Like it looks like military shit. It's just a nice backpack. Uh she's like, excuse me, sir, uh your patch. What what does it mean? And I'm like, excuse me? Like I have no idea what the fuck she's talking about. And I I like take it off for a second. Like, oh, oh, that oh, that was just a... I'm sorry, it's just a joke. Like it's you know, I thought it was kind of funny. I, I put it on there, I didn't think about it. She's like, she's clearly defeated. She's like, Oh. I have a, a son who's who's special needs, and he uh, he really wants to join the military. I didn't know if there was a, a special division. Or, <laughs> and oh. I have to stand in line with her for another 10 minutes where oh. I was like, oh, no, ma'am, I'm sorry. I just, it was, it was a joke. It, so you uh, didn't just tell her about the Marine Corps? <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't just, you didn't just tell her about the Marine Corps? They will pick him up from a home. <laughs> Where do you keep him? 
keep him? <laughs> <laughs> don't pick him up from the home, dude. Where do you keep him? Oh, oh fuck. Yeah. Yeah. So that that was yeah. that's one of those stories I would have yeah. never. You don't told even him. have like, to clean oh. his cage or anything. They'll have one for him, dude. Oh my god! I just uh, I'm surprised you you weren't like <clears throat> give that to him. Yeah, he's make him a he's a special little soldier. <laughs> hey, oh, can you imagine god. that sketch? The special need division training. Oh yeah, that'd be fun to write. <laughs> that would be like amazing fucking, to like, star in. It's like Bad Company. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's like the Inglorious Bastards, but they're all special needs. <laughs> <laughs> what would that sound like? The retarded like? bastards. <laughs> Inglorious retards. <laughs> yeah. The bear, tar- the bear tard. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, it's like the guy, the master blaster from Mad Max. <laughs> it's just master <laughs> Who runs Bada Town? <laughs> Holy shit, guys. Oh, God. That's fucking bad. This is the one. I know. This is the one. This I'm is like, what one. is it? We never tip the line. It's like, wham. It's just hitting every, the fucking line. I'm the I know one that bad. needs to be like the most proper out of any of us. And like every time I'm fucking on, we're always like, this is the one. <laughs> <laughs> I do so much, um, not mundane, but I do so much like I'm more doing more behind the scenes stuff, which is um, fulfilling, but it's like I don't get to be as janky as I used to. So. I like I hold it all in and then I show up here. I'm like I, I can say that really okay because you're like you've been doing your uh, interviewing old vets like World yeah War I'm II. like getting World War II veterans to cry these days which is like serious business that was really cool that was the, yeah. I saw that that was yeah. really nice I'm like five for five for getting veterans to cry on camera I'm pretty good at that <laughs> go on no I'm just saying I'm really good at getting war vets to cry on camera. You're doing, I mean, you're doing really good at it. And it is such a Should shift. we let the audience know what he's actually talking about? <laughs> yeah, he's not oh, yeah, that a little Oh, no, no. Oh, no, I'm not. He's not bullying. I'm not bullying them. I'm not telling you them to Ryan the Reynolds shit. themselves. I'm making yeah. a 98-year-old man cry. Yeah. No, I'm like, t- get, I'm getting them to tell their stories. But, yeah, it's very fulfilling. But, like, yeah, that I. it's less caca poo poo pee these days for me from my 9 to 5 and, and more that. So this is... Because it is a big shift for you on your style of content, your usual Jack stuff. Yeah. Because Jack, oh, we've said this before, and I've said it like last on uh, Drunk History one. I was like, Jack, fucking just do history stuff. You have like a deep knowledge on history. Lean yeah. into it. And you're like, but what about my belly? I'm like, no. A lot no, of people Jack. see Jack the actor, and like they see a lot of like the, the purposeful, like dumb, crazy shit you do. But like the yeah, I like, and know, I like, like playing those characters. Uh, and I, it's yeah. fun. I get it. But like you're really actually, like I genuinely think you're a very smart man. You've got a lot Thank of you. knowledge, and I, I respect you. I was just thinking about this on the car ride over here. Okay, you want to do history? Here's a history bit. This is one of the most bizarre stories in the history of the United States. I, I don't know if I said this last show, so if I did, just I cut me off. I don't remember it. So you're but good. in 1864, <laughs> was drunk. In, in the late winter of 1864, uh, Robert Todd Lincoln was standing on a train uh, platform in Patterson, New Jersey, <laughs> waiting, to get, waiting to get on the train. Uh, they didn't have airplanes in 1864. Nope. Um, and all of a sudden, the train's coming up, and the crowd. That was your ca- history fact of the day. <laughs> yeah, they were no planes, no planes. Yeah. in eighteen sixty four. Anyway, autism. <laughs> yeah. I was saying, did he brought up the story for me, dude? He's like, I'm gonna say trains as many times <laughs> as possible. <laughs> Dude, we're 15 seconds into the story. He said train yeah. seven times. Dude, yeah. this is m- for me. Hey, you guys shut up for a second. You, <laughs> go on. And, uh, and it was a steam engine. I hate that I know. <laughs> so back in the day, it used to from uh, your train story uh, for six, it used to take six months on a uh, carriage to cross the United States. Uh, but trains limited it brought it down to fourteen and then ten days with uh, four, down to four days was the fastest transcontinental railroad. Yeah, and all that. yeah. But it went from Union like Pacific, six whatever. months. Yeah, six months to that trains. Yeah. Changed America. Go on, Jack. Well, and I love how we all had to have an autism moment <laughs> yeah. of about trains. About about trains. For trains. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, I know God. you're the autistic oh, one, no. but let me tell you this train fact. Yeah. <laughs> the episode is going to be like, we're autistic, yeah. and that's it. Yeah. Go on, sorry, Jack. Anyway, I'm sorry. Here's your token Tourette's guy chiming in. Um, 1864. So Robert Todd Lincoln, the son of President Abraham Lincoln, sitting President Abraham Lincoln, uh, uh, the crowd surged as the train was coming in and he got pushed off the platform. Um, And so he's literally seconds away from getting smashed by this train. How much do you think it weighed? 
That doesn't really have anything to do with story. I just thought you would know. <laughs> no, no, I'm, not a, num- okay. I'm not a numbers kinda, autistic. Okay. I looked I'm not at a him like he autistic. would have an answer. I, yeah, don't, I, I don't know why. Yeah. So no, we, no, I'm not the numbers the autistic. I was trying to, I'm like, I don't know. Maybe I could come up with a cat, like how far it would throw him. But <laughs> <laughs> um, Out of the blue, right as he's about to. <laughs> Go on, Jay. Out of the blue, right as he's about to get smacked and die from this train, this hand comes down, grabs him, and launches him up from the train platform and saves his life. And like Link, uh, little baby Lincoln's standing there, he looks up and it's this. He recognized who it was right away. He was one of the most famous actors from one of the most famous acting families in America. It was John Wilkes. It was Edwin oh. James Booth. Holy shit! Okay, Wait, is this okay, this is a real on. story? This is I'll. I'll uh, it's been proven. Edwin James Booth and Robert, he didn't, uh, Booth didn't recognize Lincoln. Back then, no one gave a fuck what the president's kids looked like. But like, uh, Lincoln recognized Booth. Like, they were yes. like the freaking Barrymores at that time of American acting royalty. Well, if he's saving kids from trains, he was like the the Keanu Reeves of, you know, 1864. Yeah. yeah. Like, just a really nice guy actor. Yeah, just a nice guy actor. <laughs> well, and he was. This is the, so yeah. the most bizarre part. So anyways, they have a brief exchange. It's a thank you. Then he gets on the train and Robert Todd Lincoln literally was, um, had just commissioned in the army. They sent him to go like work for Grant. They're like, we're not putting this kid on the front lines. He told this story and people were like, holy fuck. And then of course, four or five months later, uh, Edwin's younger brother, who uh, was kind of a piece of shit, uh, John Wilkes, assassinated the father of Robert Todd Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln. Uh, just four or five months later is when the assassination happened. No shit. So, this, so one Booth, brother saves the son, the other brother kills the father. Yeah. And this, by the way, it's Edward like Booth, biblical. he wasn't like yeah. a political guy. And, you know, everyone, when you're in the middle of a civil war, people expect you to take sides. He never really did that. He just, <clears throat> he maintained himself as an actor. He was like grief stricken. Like that was like a family embarrassment. You know, oh, my brother killed the president. But that's like the equivalent today. Okay. If like, Hunter Biden was like on a four day crack bender and he's on a plane sitting in comfort plus and he's like, I'm going to open up the fucking emergency exit and, and everyone's panicking and they don't know what to do. And then all of a sudden and he's from got first, crack strength. Yeah. So he's, he's got a, crack strength. He, he might actually and do from it from all of a sudden from first class comes running one of the Jonas brothers and stops <laughs> him and saves his life and everybody else's life. And then five months later, one of the other, Nick Jonas decides to go cap Papa Joe. That's like, <laughs> what are the fucking chances? <laughs> that would be, I mean, that is front line. How was also, that Also, somebody should uh, check on the Jonas Brothers. We, I mean, yeah. we, should, we should probably use the Hemsworths. Yeah, the Hemsworths. That's yeah, a better yeah. example. Yeah, jo- The Jonas Brothers, I don't, I don't know if anybody would recognize them. Oh, anymore. yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah, one of the Hemsworth. Oh, that's yeah. the guy who used to date Chris Taylor is the Swift. Good guy. Yeah, yeah. Chris is the good guy, and whatever the fucking the the the, 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 the Liam. other one, Liam. Yeah. Liam. Yeah. yeah. God, I think the they, there's a from third that. that nobody knows about too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, is it but, just me, or does Liam look a little special needs? <laughs> it's just. I just think well, well, he's going to be the new Witcher. Yeah, but he looks. You know what I mean? Like he he's got like he a little Eli Manning games. about him. He just like I mean Eli Manning now. Yeah, he's okay. Okay, there we go. That's what it is. Liam Hemsworth looks like Eli Manning got in that machine that Steve Urkel used to become like Stefan Urkel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I expected you to say. But that, was, that was not it. That was not going in that direction. But now that I've said it, wait, am I wrong? <clears throat> no, I'm, I'm more on the fucking. How big was this national news during that time frame? Because well, the assassination definitely was. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But I made a this, couple of newspapers. It, it, no, it, it wasn't really. It was a known story within certain circles. And what happened was years later, Robert Todd Lincoln, arguably, if, if you take just Robert Todd Lincoln, arguably went on to have a way more successful career than his dad did. He became the secretary of state. He was the ambassador to London or to, to the United Kingdom. Like he had a very successful life. And he worked under Grant's presidential administration. He told Grant the story. This was like 10 years after his father died. Grant wrote a personal letter to Edwin Booth thanking him, basically. And that letter basically like was the only thing that like Edwin Booth clung to as far as like closure during that whole incident. That's actually really cool. Yeah. And Edwin Booth's career was already pretty popping during the Civil War. He went on to play Hamlet, which is like a big deal back then. Like he was like, he was the Tom Cruise of America. And um, Americans generally did not hold it against him for what his brother did. 
Which is crazy. That's pretty, what, what's yeah. crazy? That a lot of people. What a lot of people don't know is how mu- how deep that assassination plot went. As far as how deep it sh- it, it w- like what they planned they hung on nine, doing. Right? What's up? They hung nine. Well, the, what they planned on doing? Like they were they were, they were trying to take out like Seward, Seward Stanton, yeah. uh, the like the VP Secretary of War. Like, but like one of the guys was <laughs> what we would now refer to as retarded. Lewis Payne was his name. <laughs> Yeah, he like he, oh, looking dude, back so on radio it, radio like, ruined their plan, is what you're saying, dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but the one, Lewis so Payne, who was supposed what to like do? what? What Lewis? Sorry Payne. for interrupting. You. No, well, Lewis no, no, Payne, I, no, I, I no. He was one of the conspirators. The Lewis... Okay, conspirators, but he fucked it up because he was like retarded. Yeah, so he just because every, everybody had a guy to kill, and John Wilkes Booth was the only one. Like ironically enough, the guy at the fucking you know tip of the spear. Only guy who actually followed through because he had Everybody access to else. those theaters. That's why it was supposed to be like a like four thi- like unified... four things at once. Like they were going to wipe out the entire fucking high command of the United States, like yeah. a full coup. Oh no, shit! So yeah. this is a deep plan. and this was right it was after a, it was a conspiracy. Yeah. Uh, excuse my historical ignorance here, but I think this was right after uh, after Appomattox. Yeah, so like it was like it was clear that the, uh, South was not the assassination win. happened. The yeah, the it was the ninth when they signed. I believe the assassination happened on the fourteenth. So like five days later is when it happened. Mm-hmm. But they had been planning it before. They knew the thing was coming to an end. This was like yeah. a last, you know, Hoorah. yeah. And all dang. See, that's like this is because you did your video on the Lincoln assassination, which yes. is like testing the dummy. And the ballistics for it. We're doing MLK next. That's going to be a spicy one. Yeah. Dude, Ooh. all of them, it, because we were talking about uh, on the drive here, I was actually explaining one of the, during the uh, Grassy Knoll, the bu- the ballistic being in, ca- like, staying in shape is what caught yeah, everyone The, the Joe guard. Rogan thing where he posted, yeah, yeah. Cause that, and that's like, and then the, the ballistics <laughs> for 10 million view video on that because it's like testing the Joe Rogan JFK theory. Because like, and it and then you were actually surprised by that. You're like, huh? Or were you surprised that? Well, so I will say there was a variable we didn't take into consideration, which like, because we were just doing a dumb YouTube video. I thought this was gonna be another video, get six hundred thousand views, whatever. Got ten million. Whoops. Uh, <laughs> That's the size of New York. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we didn't use the exact. If I knew it was gonna be a ten million view video, I would have gotten the exact type of cartridge that they used because it was like a round nose projectile which changes a lot changes a lot so yeah with 10 million views someone in the comment section is gonna call you out right basically I think that's why it got 10 million views is because so many people were telling me i was wrong <laughs> like the the engagement just shot through the roof the people were like well what actually yeah ob- what obviously happened about jfk it's like well yeah it's keep clearly talking not- this is getting monetized yeah. right <laughs> now uh, yes because it's, it's lost like a- me in your judgment red faces <laughs> but it's like it's clearly not obvious if everybody's still fighting about it 60 years later like yeah. come on dude Dude, so that that's one. Jack, what is your favorite piece? Like, it, in your historic knowledge in America, what's your favorite time period? I'll do one better. What's your favorite conspiracy? Oh. Oh. Yeah, you know, I never... You know, it's, something happens when you're a white guy and you hit 40. You really start thinking about conspiracy theories. Uh, you look like a dude. I, but I'm not. <laughs> they've, they've, never really, they've never really interested me. Uh, but... From his, uh, one that happened that there is validity to it is the bombing of the USS Maine, which is what took us into the Spanish-American, Spanish-American War. That was America's first kind of like false flag type of accusation that the United States um, basically conducted a bombing on, a, on, on one of our own U.S. warships to justify going to war with Spain because it was a very, it was a very clear policy of the United States that we need to take back this hemisphere. And Spain was the last European power still um in we- the western hemisphere and so it was in ri- it was in writing that we need to get the spanish out here for, out of here for like 80 years and th- so the argument is that we we um orchestrated the bombing of the USS Maine in order to justify going to war with Spain so uh, do you do you think it was actually like a purposeful bombing or was it an accident that was turned into an attack quote unquote the Realistically, that probably would have been the case more, right? Yeah, like a cigarette. Or there, maybe, there, cigarette maybe there was a the... fucking bombing. It, there was a lot of like rebel groups and shit like that that had all sorts of different motives at that time. People forget whenever there's a revolution going on or any type of coup, it's not just one side versus the other. There's like 20 people throwing their fucking shit. Like when the Russian revolution happened, it's not like Lenin led the charge. There was a lot of different political organizations that were vying to take over that vacuum. 
Yeah, power vacuum. So kind they of were like just now. the ones who did it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Pretty much. Lenin, Lenin, no, but it's just the, the Bolsheviks just happen to have the best muscle. That's what happens with power vacuums. It's like no different than ISIS or anything. It's like, hey, we created this instability. They had the most power at the time. They rose up in right. Iraq and yeah. all that. But during that time frame, well, but I, 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 I like that one because I'm familiar with it. And it's, you know, it's long enough to go. It's re it realistically could have happened. You know, we know the Gulf of Tonkin was kind of it wasn't a false flag, but it was it was rooted in was untruths. Weird. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Was that when it started? Was so that was our first documented like, hey, we that's the do first time um, shit. The American public kind of collectively started being like, did we do this on purpose? Well, what, what was the the quote from the guy, the the newspaper guy? Like, I can't remember. It's like a famous quote, but it was something like, "You write the article, I'll write the news." Yeah. Oh, could have been Joseph Goebbels. I don't know. Uh, well, no, it was about the Spain. Oh, oh, no, really? The, I didn't yeah. know that. Okay, or about yeah. the, the main. Excuse me. Yeah, and that was in 1898. So right when America's really hitting its industrial stride and everything, we're starting to become an actual not uh, international power, but we were a power in the region. Um, so yeah, I like that one. And then that was when the West was. We were still winning over the West at that time. A lot of people don't realize they, that we were pretty much done by. But that we time. still there well, were still 18, pockets. Eighteen nineties, eighteen nineties, still the cattle wars and everything was going on, right? Sheep wars, cattle wars. People were still fighting on horseback back then. Yeah. Fun story. Spanish American War. Teddy Roosevelt. Can I? Can yeah, I? Go get it. Get um, it. I love some Jack knowledge, dude. This yeah. dude. This is Jack. This like, is like watching the Teddy Roosevelt was in real life. <laughs> Assistant Secretary at the. <laughs> I'm here for it. Like I'm. I'm so Same invested. Dude, I know. Man. Everyone yeah. just shut up and we're like, go, Jack. I love this. Teddy Roosevelt was the Assistant Secretary of the Navy, which is back then especially was a fucking prestige. He was young. He was like early 30s. He was bound for political greatness at that point. He'd been hitting all the check marks. So Assistant Secretary of the Navy. The great statesman. He finds out the America's going to war. And this is the thing. It's the ironic thing that Teddy Roosevelt received a Nobel name. Peace Prize when his the his proudest accomplishment was killing a Spaniard with his bare hands. <laughs> um, but I love Teddy he, America's so going much. to America's going to war. And he's like, Fuck this Washington D.C. bullshit. Resigns and he goes right to the secretary. Right, right to the secretary of war. Is like, I want to have my own cavalry regiment, and um, he becomes um, he becomes a battalion commander um, in for the the last cavalry regiment in U.S. history, the Rough Riders. Yep. And he and he did Teddy again, raised in a prestigious family in New York. He was such an interesting character. He comes down to San Antonio to the Manger Hotel, the Manger Bar, which has been open since 1858. Where we just were like a week where we or just two were, weeks ago. Yeah. He walks into that bar and he fucking, and he says, I'm raising a fucking cav cav cavalry regiment of all the freaks and fucking weirdos and psychopaths from South Texas. And he recruits the Rough Riders. Uh, uh, he recruits a company of the Rough Riders. I love this, out of that bar. this part of Texas where you only need to like walk in and say that, and you yeah. find your whole group. Yeah, <laughs> like and I need fucking psychopaths yeah. and freaks. Found him. There's a bullet yeah. hole in that bar that they say Teddy Roosevelt shot because he was getting to shooting matches in the bar. That who can shoot the closest type of matches? It's right near the mirror. As if you walk in from inside the hotel, there's a, a mirror right next to where the bartenders go behind the bar. Oh, right. Yeah, and there's a hole right above. They say that's Teddy Roosevelt's bullet hole. But he raises, he trains them over at Mission Concepcion, which is one of our other. Uh, not everything's the fucking Alamo. We got four other missions that are beautiful. And they're not like the Alamo, which is just a giant gift shop. There's four other amazing missions in San Antonio that not enough that that people don't go to. They're actually active Franciscan churches and owned by the Department of uh, Parks. Uh, or the, the 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 park department, which Teddy Roosevelt created, one of his greatest legacies to the United States. Anyways, Teddy Roosevelt, they raised, they trained these guys to do cattle uh, or to to do horseback and become a cavalry regiment. And they get down to Florida and they're about to board the boats and they realize this is why I'm never you never call anyone a poke because pokes are important because someone m messed up logistically and like we don't have room for these horses. They're like okay, well we're a cavalry regiment. It's just going to be you guys getting on the boat. So they take them down there, and they did all their fighting uh, in Puerto Rico and um, Cuba uh, as infantrymen at the last second. And they charged San Juan Hill, and Teddy killed a bunch of Spaniards, and he got to knock that one off the check mark of things he wanted to do in his life. And then he, and then, uh, he became president shortly after. Dude, that dude is a baller. Cause he's, what are his biggest accomplishments other than like that? He just 
again, coming from a prestigious life and yeah. then being like, hey, I want to <laughs> learn boxing, fighting. He boxed kangaroos in the Oval Office. Yeah. <laughs> Cause like he, that's the thing he's so, known for. Like you see so, like the cartoons of him with the boxing gloves and everything. Yeah. So yeah. Teddy Roosevelt was our Prince Harry. No, he's better. I'd say no, better. no, yeah. way better. Yeah, yeah because way like, better. He was but he's the, the one that no was one like, I'm gonna go fly fighters. Prince Harry could only do so much. Yeah. And, yeah. Shit. and he's no like, I don't care about Teddy. this royalty shit. No, Teddy would and what? Because he did other crazy shit that was like, dude, like, oh, uh, uh, where do you start? And again, his greatest legacy is his conservationist attitude. We have, um, oh, he created our park system. Like the national park service a, the is envy all, of the world. Yeah. B, it's like really the only federal government entity that everyone can agree on. Like we need to have that. This is good. Yeah. 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 Do you know why Teddy Roosevelt killed that Spaniard with his bare hands? He littered. <laughs> <laughs> That's so Lord. we could have Yosemite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Punch through that, his Span- that Spaniard up. died for your natural freedom. <laughs> yeah. He threw a sarsaparilla bottle out of the bar, and Teddy was like, "Not on my fucking watch." Bro, and that's another thing with Cuba. It's like I started learning about Cuban history recently. Holy fuck, that's a country that's ha- has some stories to it. Holy shit, I have always just imagined him like, okay, there was a coup in the late fifties, and this asshole <laughs> took charge. Like. No, Cuba's a, been in a constant state of revolution since the. They, since they make us look like we're fucking stable as fuck. They th- that that is a land of fucking cowboys and interesting characters down the slave there. Slave trade, sugar, all that. shit. Everything, like, oh, yeah. yeah. It's always been the center. Like they arguably are the center of the Amer- uh, the Americas, the, the Western Hemisphere's freaking existence. In like in like a sci fi sense, they always remind me of like the asteroid right outside of the civilized world that everybody does their trade at. Yeah, yeah, it, and that's ex- that's what it was for hundreds of years. They're the unregulated space station of the world. Yep, dude, it's crazy when you see like, and, and it's just one little thing, and they cause. I mean, the Cuban Missile Crisis like came from just yeah. that, and you're like, what the fuck? The Soviets <laughs> convinced dude. one country in the area, like, hey, you want to let us hang out for a bit, and it caused so <laughs> much disruption. Almost and, ended ninety percent of life on Earth. Like yeah. That. And we miss that just because wasn't there even a glitch in the radar or that's uh, in the that's a different story. It's yeah. that's a phenomenal story. The, the Russian guy who like basically Some said like we're not fired. Twenty four oh, yeah, year old that's lieutenant. It. That's the one. Yeah, Some yeah. lieutenant literally is th- arguably the greatest hero in the history of the world. And we don't know his fucking name. Just so <laughs> I hate that. I think that he died guy. like four years ago or something. Well, like that. But we know the Jonas Brothers. <laughs> yeah, we know the Jonas Brothers. Because <laughs> that was a he was if he would have. The, what's Not, the story on that? If he get? did his job, all world on all, all life on on the planet yeah. would pretty much be done. He basically disobeyed a direct order because yeah, he's like, I correct. don't. And moral, the I morally object to this order. Yes, and I'm not gonna fucking launch. Yeah, the and missiles. he had just as much knowledge, just enough so for, knowledge for the for audience who, who doesn't know the story. Uh, After you. Oh shit! Well, I, Jack, Jack, you're the historian, bro. I you can know? recap it vaguely, but like, I don't. I you could probably tell it better. Uh, just vaguely, it's um, he uh. There was a glitch on the screen, and uh, it was pointed that there were missiles coming from American Station Europe, uh, uh, and he was being told from every direction, uh, launch these missiles into Western Europe, um, and he had enough knowledge to understand something was off with this, like to understand that it was a glitch, and he disobeyed the orders to fire back, and uh, turns out it was a glitch. And ha- had he freaked out, and people forget at this period in early '80s, this is right when Reagan was starting to ramp up that we're going to dismantle this. Thing. Like it was tense. And so, he, if he hadn't had the presence of mind to do what he did, the world would be I gone. Get how the glitch worked. It was like one or two, and he's like, uh, uh, it, it doesn't, doesn't make right. sense. Yeah, on like, the, yeah, like I, this I, I is- like a fucking seagull on the radar kind of shit. Like just a weird random one off. Yeah. And it was that bleep, but the immediate response was, it was like, fucking launch, launch, launch. And he's like, yeah. ah, man, I don't think this is a good He's idea. like, on the off chance that this is not real. Like, that's the kind of guy that world. we deserve to ha- fly him out to the United States to get, like, a presidential medal of freedom. Yeah. I mean, we should know his name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the world <laughs> like, should know that guy's the name. the world should know his yeah. name. I think it's public who it is, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think the Soviets released, it's not like they hid what happened 
Like yeah. everything turned out fine. He was a hero. But yeah, it's yeah. Those are the, the names. People the Soviets should know. were basically like, just so you guys know, you owe him a thank you. Yeah. <laughs> just so you know, <laughs> we were fully ready to go. <laughs> we were gonna like, kill everyone. Yeah. Our, our, our reply is like, well, just so you know, we were working on that whole Iron Dome technology like fucking decades before yeah. you thought we were. So like, we'd be fine. But yeah. you know, around. which is crazy because Soviet at that time, it is crazy that they. Did he get punished for that entire thing? Or was it punishing at first or then it was like clear? I think it was at first he got punished, but like they for figured ignoring out. Ignoring yeah. I'm sure he spent a day or two. That's I think that's why America world. has thrived the way it has in war situations, even like economic situations, is we we, we, don't, we take for granted as Americans because we're used to living like this, that other countries really stick hard to doctrine and following the rules and the way things are supposed to be. And we have such Look a chaotic... Japan. Yeah, we, and that's but that's why we had advantage over, advantages over them. Is it, again, it's not just warfare. The enemy can't know what we're doing if we don't know. what We're, we're exactly doing. That is the <laughs> we military. Are, we, a are fucking, a, dude, we are. We are a is, wild uh, card yeah. culture, and it's because I think it's in our cultural DNA. To, it's not like those are the rules we set up for ourselves. It's in our DNA to kind of just roll the dice our, every once in a while. Our entire cultural identity is based upon the idea that you can't fucking tell us what to do. Yeah. yeah so my, my, anytime somebody tries to tell us what to do, we just get drunk and be like, "Want to fucking bet? <laughs> my, my <laughs> Want to fuck?" Bad. My idea of America is, is it was it was the uh, the American experiment is just the idea that fucking dangerous freedom works. Yeah. Whether it's economically, whether it's military, whatever, like dangerous well, freedom is our fucking idea. And, and that's when pe- and when people talk about these days are the worst. I'm like, we have been in a constant state of chaos since day one. It, Larry, you can, I can you can name any decade. I can tell you how things were fucked up and people were nervous and things weren't sitting right. Like well, the, a lot of people don't even realize for the however many years since what 1776 since we've been established as a country we've only had 12 or 17 years of peace we have done war in some capacity in some capacity for over 200 of those fucking years 200 yeah 200 of those years. I, was like, I feel like <laughs> I grew up in one of the best decades as far as like the and 90s was fucking war, rad, dude. You got a couple of those years. <laughs> yeah, I got a couple of those years, but still, shit was fucking crazy. My generation invented school shootings. <laughs> I was 15 when Columbine happened. <laughs> Which is crazy. But it's, and Which, we also all hey. have HPV. And then all the fucking, all the Europeans are like, well, that's why you need an assault weapons ban. It's like, motherfucker, Columbine happened during the assault weapons ban. Like Dude. the first big school shooting happened while we banned assault weapons. Yeah. Fuck you guys. Waco, all that stuff. We were st- we still had chaotic stuff going on in the quote unquote most prosperous decade. Uh-huh. Yep. It's just a lot of people fail to realize like America's just chaos and we've we live like that. Yeah. Dude, I'm not saying I'm time. not I'm not justifying school shootings here by any means, but like <laughs> it's an important okay, caveat. We, we should work on that. Yeah. Here's, but, a, here's the not deal. Great. Right? If you if we like go into a bar and like there's a big strong dude who's like making a bunch of ruckus and causing a bunch of noise. And you go up and you're like, hey, bro, why don't you knock it off? If he turns around, knocks out his his own friend, and there's like, what the fuck do you want to do? You're not fucking with them. You know what I mean? It's like he, he just knocked out his friend and he's still ready to fight. We us. have dude, actually he just took out his own backup and he's excited like, about us. Bro, bro like, I fucking love him. What am I going to do to you? Yeah, yeah exactly. You, you literally just explain a metaphor for our foreign policy. That's basically it. It's like, oh. So Jack Mandeville <laughs> thinks we should fire missiles at Israel right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. It'll really conf- confuse Hezbollah. They might just stop. <laughs> Everyone's just like looking around. Like, I'm sorry, not Hezbollah, Hamas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually. Oh fuck. Well, you oh you just opened a fucking can of worms. Yeah, I'm like, oh, okay. I mean, uh, to, am I allowed to make joking metaphors about that yet? Tomato, tomato. <laughs> For Darnell's podcast. I love a fucking Jack's last quote on the drunk history, and we're going to end it this way. His last quote on that drunk history episode was like, "We're not even going to talk about Muslims." <laughs> And then it ends the in all the com- yeah the, the comments. I saw that in the comments. So, but what Jack mean about Muslims? Like, so everyone's just asking Arabs, about Arabs. Arabs. Yeah, you said. That. I love Arab people. I know. I love the Arab people. I love Arabia. I love. Go- I'm going to. I've been to Jordan four times for work. I'm going there next year. Um, on my own for the first time. I love Jordan. I the Iraqi culture is so phenomenal to me when I experienced it. I don't like. Um, I don't like rich i don't like certain countries because the dubai arabs 
Yeah, specifically the Saudis. Yeah, yeah. like they're they're dicks. They're assholes. But when I've been in places like Jordan, Egypt, Iraq, I've seen nothing. Kuwaitis are assholes. And then you go into Iraq, they're the kindest people I've ever fucking met. Yeah, I, anyways, we didn't, we didn't even get to talk about the, the culture. Girls. You have a tattoo on your arm. What is your? Oh, oh my god. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, I thought it was going to be a nice story, and he's like, "Oh fuck, yeah." It's not. It's a. It's one of those. Uh, I I could have gotten this lasered off years ago. Stories, yeah. Oh no. <laughs> it's just that I was part of a generation of young men coming back for war, where we had to, um, you know, toss some. It's not. It doesn't say infidel. That's the stereotypical one. It's even worse. It's cringe. I'm embarrassed from it because it's so fucking cringe. What's it say? It it, it means like. I'm getting it lasered off, by the way. Uh, Dr. <laughs> Scott, you know Dr. Scott. <laughs> Dr. Scott, he's a he's a hill country uh, hill country uh, surgery in uh, San Antonio. If you're looking for the best plastic surgeon in the city, in the city, uh, go to Hill Country Surgeries. Dr. Scott. For a second, those random plug No, random plug ever. Use uh, code cum yeah, to no. save ten percent. Yeah. Yeah. No, it means Nothing. it means it's so cringe. It means like fighter. That's not that. Bad. Look, he's judging me. I can it's, see it in his eyes. At least it doesn't say infantry. That, that's not as no, wor- that's not as bad as I thought it was going. No, no. no. You just yeah. have an Ed Hardy tattoo, dude. It's basically yeah. <laughs> an Ed Hardy for freaking two thousand six vets. Yeah. <laughs> That is going to be it for the unsubscribed podcast. Thank you guys, you beautiful people, for joining us. Where can we find you guys? At the local bar, typically. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Uh, AJ Wilkerson Comedy on Instagram and YouTube. Boom. And Mr. Jack. Yeah, you can find me at Jared's house. That's where I'm living these days. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Hey, guys, make sure you stay tuned for the after show. Mr. Jack does have to leave, so we're going to cut him loose, and then we're going to do a 10 to 20-minute segment afterwards. Love you all.